Ja, det er sådan noget. Let her alone. She is just a kid. Um, Hitler. Hitler. Hitler made them go away because they were Jewish. Papi, mm -hmm. who is Hitler and what is who is Anna Frank and what is the Jewish memorial? I know one thing. What? Um, I just know that um Anna Frank um was Jewish, so the Nazis didn't like her. That's why she um they had to go to a, a concentration camp. You know what? Yeah. Come with me. You, you know what, girls? You want to know more about Anna Frank and the uh, Jewish Memorial and other things? Yes. yes. Come with me. Let's go. Put your jacket, girls. Ah. Hello, class. I'm interviewing my dad. Hello. Okay, so where are we? We are in the very center of Berlin. Where Hitler? We are at what was called the Führer Bunker, so where Hitler was hiding um, and protecting himself at the very end of the war in, in April 1945. And you can see the picture here of actually how the bunker was made. It's with, a floor plan. Yeah the rooms the offices <laughs> and under here is it told that is where the bunker still is yeah under this parking lot you see Oli? Under, under this parking lot and if you look at this picture you see the concrete you see you see how how much concrete how much safe was this bunker and a bunker was made against bombs against airplane bombing against tank bombing uh. um yeah Okay, why did Hitler hide here? Well, because in 1945, the Germans were about to lose the war. So from the east side, the Russian were coming from the south. The American were coming from west and north. The English were coming <coughs> and the French as well. So he felt uh, that he had to protect himself and to live in a normal building would not be safe because if you live in a normal building, and the planes are bombing, well, the building will be destroyed. So, in the cities, bunkers were built to hide the very important politicians. Um, but also if the bombs go on the floor. Also if the bomb goes in the floor, but look, this bunker is under the floor, and there is so much concrete, so much beton and iron, it's that almost- It's meters and 50 centimeters yeah, thick. It always makes it impossible for the bomb to bomb it. When did Hitler hide here? Uh, I don't know exactly. It's written somewhere, perhaps here. But uh, it, it says that the 20th of March 1945, in the garden of the Reich's Chancellery, about 50 men assemble and mix the bags of Hitler youth and member of the SS division, Brunsberg, who is in there, blah, blah, blah. Um, <laughs> so the 20th. 20th of April 45, Hitler celebrated his 56th birthday, and the 30th of April 45, during after Hitler and his wife Eva Braun, who had married not long before in the bunker, committed suicide. So the 30th of April 1945, Hitler and his wife committed suicide because they knew that the Russians were entering the city and they didn't want the Russian to capture Jam, to capture capture them. Jam, them. them. Um. In what war was your grandpa in? My grandpa fought in World War II and he was sent to Africa. Okay, um, is it true that he went to a concentration camp? Yes, he fought the war one year, then he, wore, he became a prisoner of the British, so the English, and they put him in a concentration camp under very, very heavy measure. The Italian prisoners were treated very badly and they were had little, little food and he stayed there uh, for six years, even beyond the war finished. 
Okay, well, we're going to go now where the stones of the people are. Oli, where are we? Uh, we are at Hannah Arendtstrasse. And what is this behind you? Um, where it's like, it's like a cemetery, but just that the people's bodies aren't there. It's called the Holocaust the Memorial, Jewish. right? Yeah, it's for the Jewish. We're remembering the death during the Holocaust. <laughs> Papa, where are we? We are what is called the Holocaust Memorial. It is a huge, huge, huge plot. The first time I came to Berlin, there was nothing here. We are between Hitler's bunker, Brandenburg Tor, Tiergarten, and this was just no man's land 20 years ago. So an architect, I don't remember the name of the architect, thought of uh, doing a memorial at the heart of Berlin to commemorate and remember those deceased during the war, the Jewish that died because of man's madness um, and and it is a very powerful place because if you can see for example there are many pathways you know this way or this way it's a kind of labyrinth is gray and uh, it reminds me i'm not sure but i think it was inspired to uh the, the big cemetery on mount olive in in israel where actually jesus christ himself was there with the uh, with his uh, disciples and these big stones these steles are uh, remembering at least in shape the, the the Jewish buried in the cemetery of the Mount Olive why um, why were the weapons so dangerous well any weapon is dangerous and a weapon is used from one side to arm or kill the other side in war one side want to kill the other side to have more power hitler wanted to make of europe and the world a nazi land so the russian the american the english thought this was not good especially because to do this hitler wanted to kill the jews wanted to kill minorities wanted to kill everyone against him he was really a madman so hitler wanted to kill the jewish by Hitler using killed his, the Jewish. Yeah, he killed the Jewish by using his really dangerous weapons. Yes. Um, Carlotta, would you and like to ask And bringing them to concentration camps. Lottie? Carlotta, do you like to ask oh, Why do we have to um, remember all of this dangerous stuff? Oh, this is such an important question. You know why? Because people have very, very short memory. If we don't build memorial like this one, your kids will not remember that Europe had a terrible war and where so many millions of people died. So places like these are called memorials so that we can remember the bad things that people do. Trying to make experience and we will not repeat them. Is it, is it also for if there's another war? We hope there will be not another war. Yeah, this is why all the countries in Europe are united now and friends. Um, but... Uh, yeah, is to remember that war are bad. Um, but um, I read somewhere that I think Donald Trump or someone was trying to start World War Three. Yeah, that was stupid. I I really dislike Donald Trump, but actually he's the only president who didn't start a war or did, didn't do so many bombings. Um, okay. Thank you for your time, Papa, and. Please go yeah. check this Shall out. Shall we go this way? I want to show you uh, the name of this street, which is a very important German philosophy. Okay, let's go. Let's just, just pause it now. Hannah Arendt. Um, Hannah Arendt yeah. Straße. Yeah. Maybe you should put it on YouTube. Pardon? So, this is a street that has a new name. This is Hannah Arendt Straße. Hannah Arendt is one of the most important philosophers of the entire world of the 20th century for sure one of the most important 
German philosopher. She was a woman, a very intelligent woman. She, she studied in Heidelberg with Heidegger. She studied then with Jaspers, one of the most brilliant minds in Berlin. And she was Jewish. And she had to flee from Germany because the Nazi didn't like her uh, because she was Jewish. So first she flew to Paris and then to New York. She taught at Chicago University, then she taught at the New School for Social Research in New York. And she wrote a book, a very important book, The Banality of, of Evil. That sometimes evil comes from banal people, you know? And the fact that people in the Nazi regime just followed order without asking themselves, is it good or bad what I was told to do? So Anna Arendt told us, ask yourself if the order you receive is good or bad for you, if it's good or bad for humanity. And she claimed that sometimes evil is just banal. Evil. Thank you. Okay. Um, and it's so cold now. Yeah, I have a question. Yeah? This is the last question. Who is Anna Frank? Anna Frank, very Anna important. Frank. At Christmas, I gave you a book about the story of Anna Frank. Anna Frank was a girl born in Frankfurt on the Main, so Deutschland, and she was also Jew. And uh, she had to escape from the Nazi because, again, the Nazi didn't want someone like her. And she kept the diary of her life. And she fled to Amsterdam, and then with her family, they were recluded in an attic, you know, and they had to be quiet all day long so that no one would, would hear that they were around. But then one day they were discovered and brought to a concentration camp where they died. The only who survived, actually, is her father, Otto Frank, who found her book her memories of what they were going through and it was a good idea to publish it so that people would know the memories of a girl in Nazi times. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye.